Hello, early learners, and welcome back to the art room. We have been celebrating International Dot Day all week long, and we were looking at artists who had dot art, and we were looking at the dot, the book by Peter H. Reynolds that started off this whole celebration was his book to encourage artists to believe in themselves and to be creative and not worry what others are doing. And we talked about Yayoi Kusama who did that very thing. No one was painting with dots when she was showing her art and she did it on her own and people loved it. And so she became famous and has a lot of money and living in Japan and doing just what she likes. Now today is an artist that we have met before and he does his art in a different way. His paints are often thick and he puts them on in big chunks or he would do things that are in a swirl or he did all kinds of other art and we're going to talk about him and look at his art but let's do our good morning song and welcome each other back to the art room. Hello, nice to see you everyone. Hello, nice to see you, everyone. Hello to you, hello to you, hello to you, hello to me. Hello, nice to see you, everyone. So International Dot Day started in 2009, and the day that it's celebrated is September 15th, which passed a while back. But I thought it would be fun to do it, and then you could think about doing it next year with your classroom and talk about all the dotty things you did this year and think about how you might do it next year. And your teacher has the book so she can read or he can read that to you when you are in class and maybe put it out in the library that you can see it and think about Vashti and how she just put that dot and made her mark. And when you hear the phrase, make your mark, it means do something that is remarkable, which means people will say, hey, wasn't that that Claudia Reed Wright who did that? Oh, I want to remember her. And people will remember you for things you do in what you say and do. So always keep yourself doing the right thing so people will remember the good things about you. Now, let's look at this book called Dots, Dots, Dots at the Museum. And I gave you a hint that we were going to take a look at it. So let me move these things over and bring it down. I think I'll even put my table on my lap because it steadies me. Oh, but I'll put this on this side. Steadies me and gets the book in just the right place. All right, Dots, Dots, Dots at the Museum by Francie Alexander. And this person is looking at this print that Van Gogh did of his mailman. And he has a few dots in the background of it, but let's see how many other dots we see at this museum. Dots, dots, dots at the museum. Now this is what pointillism is like. Maybe from far away you can see that the dots are so close together that they make a picture of a house. And it asks, dots, 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 I see lots of dots. What do you see? And I say to you, what do you see? And you say, a house. Let's look at the next page. I see girls, hop, hop, hop. I see dots on the girls. Can you tell where there are dots on the girls? It's their buttons. What do you see? their buttons. If you cut and paste some people, you could do dots and put their buttons on their outfits. Let's look at the next artwork. That one was by Arintha L. James and it's called Jumping Rope. This one is called Bottle Cap Giraffe and no one knows who the artist is. But look, they have glued on an armature or a frame of all these bottle caps put together to make this giraffe. Now in TK, people have been studying Gerald the giraffe who didn't think he could dance. Maybe he needed to make his mark. It says, I see something big with dots. It can run. What can it be? And it starts with the letter G, boys and girls. What is it? It's a giraffe. Let's look at this next one. Now we studied the artist that did this painting when we were doing our snowmen 
if Picasso painted a snowman, and it's if Lichtenstein painted a snowman, and all of his work, he puts lots of dots, and what are the blue dots making for those fish? Let's read the page. Dots, dots, dots. I see a lot of blue dots. What do you see? And what are the blue dots? That's right, it's the water. Let's turn to the page. Oh, I can tell it's the very middle of the book because that's where the staples are. Let's turn the page and see what this next artwork is. Oh, this is one of the prints that we use in the art program. And it's called Piñata by Diego Rivera. Do you see any dots here? It says, I see something pop, 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 pop. It has lots of dots. What do you see? And what is this big dot that's being broken open and there are fruits and candies falling out? The piñata itself is a dot. This next artwork at the museum is the one I told you about. The dogs that are often associated with fire department. And this is called The Girls by Christian Pierre. I see lots of black dots. I do not see a cat. What do I see? And you answer, dogs. We studied this already, too. It's Paul Clay's Senecchio. Dots, dots, dots. I see two red dots. Can the dots see me? And what do you see? Senecchio is the man. And people thought it was Paul Clay's self-portrait. I wonder, has those two little rectangles for its mouth. And that's the end of this very short book about dots at the museum. All right, boys and girls, let's take a look at the art that we are going to study today. Get my pointer stick and turn my body. Oh, and you can see all of our artwork is over here, too. Here's the, the flying eyeball from yesterday. The one we started out with, with several circles. Here's the Yayoi's polka dot flower and Kandinsky's circle cut into a quilt piece. And today is Vincent van Gogh's self-portrait from 1887. Here is a photograph of Vincent van Gogh. Now the interesting thing about the photograph, let me unclip it and show you next to the art. Here is the photograph of Vincent van Gogh right next to the artwork. Do you notice that he used this as his model? Instead of sitting in front of a mirror and painting himself, he looked at this photograph of himself so he could see what shape his face would be, where his eyes would be, his hairline. You can see how his hairline on the photograph matches the hairline in his painting. This kind of looks like a photograph to me, but it is a painting made up of little dashes and dots. The jacket is dashes and dots. Darker dashes and dots go around the lapel so you can see where the jacket begins and the coat sleeve starts. His white shirt, white shirt. His tie, a darkened space that looks like a tie. His beard, his beard. His nose, his nose, ear, ear. You can't see his other ear because it's on the side of his face. And the way he combs his hair back, combed his hair back. All of these are made using three different colors and black and white, and they did a lot of mixing. Now, the thing that we're going to be talking about today is pointillism. And that is made up of all kinds of dots. And I brought the information on a piece of paper so that I didn't forget to tell you some super important parts about it. Now, the man I was telling you yesterday about that started doing pointillism, he started out by calling it divisionism. And that means divide things up, so divisionism. But they changed the name to pointillism. And Seurat called the style of painting divisionism when he invented it. But the name was changed over time. And they say the smaller the dots, the more clear the painting is and the sharper the lines. Just like if you were going to enlarge a picture on your computer, have you ever done that? 
made it big and the dots kind of get so fuzzy and you can't see the picture very well, or you think, oh, that's cute, I'm gonna blow it up, and when you blow it up on the copy machine, it doesn't look like what you thought it should look like once it's big because the dots all get farther apart and bigger. So the smaller the dots, the more clear it is. Now, they say that pointillism is like a science. So the people who did pointillism are really like scientists, artists. And Vincent Van Gogh experimented with the technique when he did that self-portrait we just looked at. And it, he used the colors on the color wheel. So if you know that red and green are across from each other on the color wheel, they're called complementary colors. And you look at it and say, oh, those two are complementary colors. So as we start this painting today using Q-tips and paint, um, you're going to see what I mean about the colors when you look at them from far away, what happens to them. So let me move this over and show you how I've brought my materials today. I'm using Q-tips or um, cotton swabs, I guess is what they're called. Q-tips is the name that you would buy. You can buy them that they're not called Q-tips. I made the frame just like the one from the dot and made it so that if I paint it golden and put a picture of the person I'm going to be painting in the middle, it will look like I was in that same class with Vashti and did my artwork and my teacher put it in a frame. So let me set this down. I've brought my old egg carton that I've used lots of times when I've done art with you. And it's a clear egg carton and you can see where I've used this as my palette for mixing. But today I only brought red, yellow, and blue. I didn't put black and white in there because I wanted to show you how I am going to make a picture of a person. And I, since I have curly hair, I like to make my people with curly hair. You know, when we studied about portraits, we started out with a fist-sized oval. So I'm going to start that on my piece of paper. Now, if you don't have a frame like I have on mine, you can just uh, make the frame afterwards. So remember, we start out with an oval, then two short lines for a neck. I'm going to make mine have, oh, I think I'll make a V-neck shirt. I'll make the shoulders go out, out, and curve down, down. So I don't think the pencil shows up very well on the camera. So when I start painting, you will see. But you'll want to put your frame around there. I'm going to put ears so I remember not to um, make my eyes in a different place. Now, remember the eyes go right above a little bit above where the um, ears are. And I'm just making two curved lines and I'm doing curved lines on the outside and putting the dot. I don't need to make this um, very dark because I'm going to do all of this painting. I'm going to make my person have reddish orange hair. So I'm going into the red with just the end of my um, cotton swab and I'm going to start by dotting all along the oval that I did with a, my initial drawing. I just did that little sketch so that I'd know where to put my dots. I'm just going ear to ear. Now I'm going to set this one next to it and get in and get a different one for the yellow. Now in order to make this person have kind of orangish hair, I'm going to go next to the red and when your eyes will play a trick and say, wait, is that orange? And when you get up closer, you just say, oh no, her dots are next to each other and making it look orange. Let me dip back in for a little more yellow. And if I put it on top of the um, red, it does kind of make it orange. Because when people say, oh, he's a, r a redhead or she's a redhead, it means they kind of have orangey hair. It's not really red. I'm going to go next to that and do another row. Because our hair is not just flat against our head. It stands up a little bit. I'm still doing my dots. I'm not painting, scrubbing back and forth. Let me show you what it looks like so far. Does it look kind of orange? I think so. So I'm going to do a little more red and make my hair be curly. 
and I'm making it go down below the chin because I'm going to make this person have curly hair and I will show you how that looks so far. I'm making the curls go down. And next, I will add the yellow next to it so it has kind of orangey. And as I press down with my cotton swab, it gets lighter and lighter as I get to the end of the row. So I can just keep going down and make my curls, get it a little bit more. And when you feel like the cotton swab is getting too um, flat, you can just get another one because they, I have a bunch of them here. I'm going to trade out and get my yellow. I use the yellow with the red boys and girls to tell you the truth, but it's okay. And I'm going to put some yellow in between because it will trick the people's eye to think that it has orange here when really it's the red and the yellow close together. In a minute, I'm going to pick it up and show you. Are you dotting yours? Do you have these cotton swabs? If not, you know, you can always use the eraser of a pencil. I've had to do that before. But those dots are a little bigger because these cotton swabs are smaller. I'm going to put bangs on her and put red bang, red bangs, red bangs, red bangs. And what do you think I'm going to put between the red bangs? I will put the yellow and make it look kind of orange. So in with the yellow and dot next to those red dots. And if it get mixes up a little bit and mixes orange, that's fine with me. This takes a little bit of time, boys and girls. And if you think that your hand gets tired, just rest and kind of stretch your hand out and think, oh. But when I've done this with children, they don't ever seem to get tired of doing it. Do you see mine so far? Does it kind of look orangey here? Maybe on the outside here, I need to put a little more yellow, because when I looked in the camera, it looked like it was all red on that side. So I'm going to get this and get some orange next to it. Now, how will I make skin color with just these colors and make it not look like the same color as the hair? I guess I will have to just use it and have it be um, a dried out kind of um, cotton swab. I'm even making a little sound like the metronome, like we were singing when Kandinsky was playing on his piano earlier in the week. He had the metronome tick, 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 tick. All right, I think I'm going to do some of the clothes first because I want to make purple. And you know what two colors of the primary colors together make purple? I'm going to make my shirt a purple one by doing blue first. And I'll put the dots down the v-neck shirt. Dip back in, go along the shoulder, and down to the bottom. I like to do the outline first so I know where to stay within to do my red dots after. So I'll get a new Q-tip to put the red on and go next to that and see if it does look purple when I'm going to I'll pick it up in just a second. Oh, I can tell already it's starting to go a little purpley. I wonder if I should put a couple more in here. Oh, I'll give her some earrings, maybe with the blue. Give her some earrings to match her little outfit. Oh, that, I like it. Oh, it really does look purple there. Dot, dot, dot. It's time to show you, I think. Can you see the red and the blue together are making it kind of purpley? So get in there and get some more blue. Go next to that red. And if you don't want to do it in, um, in rows like I'm doing, you can just pick up the paint from where there's lots of globs of paint. Oh, it's really mixing it now and making it kind of lavender. And I can just go all over. It doesn't even have to be done in rows. Kind of makes it better that way, I think. Let me show you. Do you see it does kind of look purple, doesn't it? Keep going. Wonder how I'll get to do the eyes. Maybe their eyes will have to be kind of purple, purpley blue. Oh, I'm going to do this shirt. I should finish what I'm working on before I start. Oh, I'm mixing it. 
I thought I wasn't going to mix it, but I like the idea when I go in with one cotton swab and get in with the other color and it mixes all together and makes it really look purpley. Do you know anyone that has purple eyes? I don't think I do. I know blue is a color of eyes, but purple? Never seen it, but that doesn't mean it hasn't happened because I haven't seen every single person's face in the whole world. But that would be unusual to see that. Mixing it up a little bit more. I think I really do like how that worked. Okay, now I'm going to go in the eyes. Ooh, I don't know if I want it to be red. I think I'll go back in for blue. Maybe she'll just get some solid blue eyes. Dot, 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 dot. And maybe if I go right in the middle for the pupil, I can make the paint come off. Let's see what you think about this so far. Yep, I think I'll do a red mouth so that you can see. That has too much yellow on it. I better get a fresh one. And I think I'll just do solid red, and I won't do another color next to it. So it'll be different when I go to do the color of the skin. I'm doing like a little mountain lip, so it looks like she has um, lady lips. There. See what you think about that. See how I made a little bit of a mountain on the top? and then a little curve line underneath. Now, how am I going to make the skin color light? Maybe I'm going to have to mix it in here a little bit. A little bit of red and quite a bit of yellow. See if it makes it into a good skin color. Oh, maybe it needs more yellow. Even yet. You can experiment, boys and girls, and if you don't like having this mixed color, you can just use the color from the, um, of paint that you have if you want a skin color kind of brownish or a skin color that's kind of peachish. And I know that when you put green in to a color, it kind of makes it a little brownish. So I'm going to get a little blue and see if that did it. Might have put a little too much, Mrs. Reed, right? So get some more yellow. Oh, I think this is a good color, boys and girls. I think it did it. Okay, I'm going to get a fresh swab and start the colors. So I'm going to start, and I'm going to leave a line next to the nose so that the nose can be seen on the face. And I'll put this color dot all around the face. I wonder if it needs a little more blue because it is getting more yellow again. But it doesn't look like it's the same color as the hair. So I think I will mix a little more brownish color in there. Oh, that did make it good. That blue really did work. Maybe I'll use this big old swab that's got a lot of paint on it and do around under her chin so that she has a shadow. Take a look. I've had fun with you doing this kind of dot art. I think it's been a lot of fun to be able to just think of dots and circles as art. I'm going to do some in the ear. And I wonder what we'll do next time. I was looking at things, because we already did the nutcracker, and that happens um, closer in the when it gets to be winter time. So I'm going to be bringing back some projects that you will enjoy, and I hope you keep watching and sending me your artwork. Let me see if I go up here. And go all in the face. I'm going to point it up and let you take a look at it. See what we think about the color. She kind of looks like she might be a little sick with that color of skin, but it's okay. I do like how I did her color of her um, shirt, though. You know when you go to the library, you can look for that book, The Dot, because I've seen it all over the place. And even I saw in an ad, there's a children's bookstore in town, and they're doing a whole celebration at the bookstore. So you could go by there and see what you can see and what they're doing about the dots. Let's do our goodbye song and kind of get ready to talk about how you have a happy weekend and be looking for dots out in your neighborhood because there are dots everywhere. 
Goodbye, see you next time, everyone. Goodbye, see you next time, everyone. Goodbye to you, goodbye to you, goodbye to you, goodbye to me. Goodbye, see you next time, everyone. Let me show you what it looks like now. Look, I think I did a good job on her. I'm a little happy about that. I might put a little rosy cheeks on her because I, you know how I think that looks good. Bye, boys and girls.